Hello. So today we are going to talk about a much beloved film in my heart, which is Tampopo. So let's see if PowerPoint will let me present. Perfect. Uh, so Tampopo is a ramen Western. I'm going to explain what that means in just a moment. Um, but <clears throat> one really major thing that we're going to see in Tampopo um, is this phrase of breaking the fourth wall. I don't know. Okay, I have a slide about framing stories. Just wanted to check before I start talking about them. So breaking the fourth wall, as some of you may already know, um, is when characters talk directly at the audience or acknowledge in some way that they're aware that they are in a fictional story that people are consuming. So this, what this means is it refers to this imaginary fourth wall through which the audience is watching or reading or looking at um, whatever content they're consuming. And so um, sometimes that can mean someone referring to the fact that they're in a comic or something like that. Deadpool obviously breaks the fourth wall a lot. Um, and this is usually used to be comedic um, because it breaks the expectations of the audience, right? We don't expect um, a character to break the fourth wall, to acknowledge that there is an audience watching. Um, I have here what films do we watch in film one that broke the fourth wall. I don't know if you guys would remember, but if you do, say it at the same time as me, I guess. Uh, it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Breaks the fourth wall a lot. Um, another thing that Tampopo does is it has a framing story. So what a framing story is, is <clears throat> this is a story that acts as a frame around the main central story. So this story sets up the real story and sometimes it seems unrelated, but it's connected by the themes. So in Tampopo, we have this framing story of this gangster, uh, the guy that you see on the screen here. But we also see these other smaller stories about food and the ways people interact with food. So we have our main story, which is the story of these two characters who you're going to learn about, Tampopo and Goro. Um, but then there are these uh, this other framing story of these other stories that are related. You'll see what I mean. So, food in Japanese culture. I started to write when I started this PowerPoint that food is important uh, to Japanese culture, but then I was like, duh, like food is important to most world cultures. Uh, food is super important and dishes um, can have significance, uh, religious significance, cultural significance. You eat different things depending on the time of year or depending on um, holidays or if you know, you're celebrating or mourning, etc. cetera. Um, so, but in Japan, um, the dishes are often regional because of different climates in Japan. So um, in one region, you might you know, go there to have um, a certain special dish that you can't get in other regions. Um, and foods are often associated there, like I said, with different seasons or with different nostalgic activities. Um, and that's not so different from other cultures, right? Like here in America, um, we tend to, there's a lot of fruits that we only eat in the summer or the spring. Uh, things like watermelon is a summer fruit, right? Things that are only available to us in certain periods of time. Um, Japan has a lot of etiquette uh, rules and a lot of rituals around both cooking and eating. So there's um, a lot of emphasis on being polite and traditions around eating. Um, and meals are often a shared experience in Japan. So um, they're often something where a lot of people sit down for a large dish um, for all three meals of the day, uh, rather than having these, America is very isolated, I think, in terms of eating. Um, and food offerings are really common in Japan, uh, especially in both Shinto and Buddhism. So sometimes people will leave food offerings at altars or at family members' graves. When they go, they'll bring food that they like. So they'll, they'll even eat lunch at their family member's grave to um, kind of honor them. Okay, so let's talk about Westerns. And it seems like I'm bouncing around all over the place, but these things are all going to culminate together in Tampopo. So the Westerns um, usually have a specific set of characteristics. And I'm so sorry, I have to blow my nose. I've got the sniffles so bad today, y'all. I'm sorry, that was probably really unpleasant. So characteristics of Westerns. So usually there's some sort of lone wolf protagonist. So some gruff man who doesn't talk a lot. Uh, who is maybe, you know, 
kind of disconnected emotionally or, or like a man's man. Um, outsiders, you often become involved in local conflict and then leave once it's resolved. So, um, for example, like in Shane or the Magnificent Seven, um, the main character, the protagonist, comes to a town. They're being beset by bandits, um, often by people of another culture or country <laughs> um, or in some way they're in some way under attack um, most westerns have some sort of assembling the team vibe um, so where they are kind of like in Avengers there are aspects of Avengers for example that has that western feel where they are gathering all these different members um, of the team and usually it results in some sort of uh, single event. So everything builds up to this single event, uh, usually a face off. So um, that's the, you know, the gunfight or the rival um, group of bandits or whatever coming into town and fighting the protagonist group. Um, but these are all kind of key aspects of what makes a Western. And I'm bringing this up. It's funny, I actually realized that both westerns that we watch this year are actually Japanese films. <laughs> they're not. Um, they're not western films, like meaning like from America, which is interesting. Okay, so Tampopo was directed by Juzo Itami and came out in 1985, and he lovingly called it a ramen western. So this is a play on um, the term spaghetti westerns, which this was a phrase that was made up to describe this director, Sergio Leone, who was an Italian director. Um, but he directed a lot of Westerns, um, most notably a lot of the Westerns that made Clint Eastwood famous. Uh, so things like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I think he did A Fistful of Dollars, I don't recall, um, etc. cetera. Um, Tampopo's main theme and focus is about the importance of food and how people use food as an expression of love. This film will make you hungry. It will make you crave ramen. <laughs> um, I, every time I watch this movie, I have to eat ramen soon after. Um, and this film, like I said, has a central story with a framing story and these other little stories all around that main central theme. So we have this main story, but then we also have these smaller little vignettes um, that are all about food in different ways and love of food. Okay, I'm so excited for you guys to experience Tampopo. I love this film. Um, Roger Ebert called this film a series of smiles, uh, which I think is really accurate. I think it's a very heartwarming film. I think you're going to like it a lot. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoy Tampopo, and let's dive on in.